So in this video, we're going to be talking about example 15.2 at the beginning of chapter 15. And just as a quick overview, what we're going to be moving into in this chapter is using what we've learned so far in descriptive and inferential statistics to start doing something called hypothesis testing, which is going to be, you know, the more advanced statistical analysis that we're looking to do in this course. And what that's going to mean is we're going to be able to start to analyze whether some treatment that we administered to um, say a group of people or product or whatever, whether that treatment actually caused any change in scores or change in values or the change in mean, or whether that, chan that, that, treat that change just happened to occur because of chance. For example, <clears throat> if we were to administer a medication to a group of people and find that their blood pressure decreased, what are the what is the probability that their blood pressure decreased because of they took that medication and what is the probability that just that random group of people actually would have um, had a decrease anyway so we can do this whenever we're talking about these probability distributions we know that we can use our density curves and no the knowledge that the area under those curves represents a probability to be able to make that determination so let's look at this example here. So we have an example where there's a company, um, they're talking about diet, coda, diet colas using artificial sweeteners, um, but these are artificial sweeteners that gradually lose their sweetness. So manufacturers are always testing um, the sweetness by using tasters to score these colas on a scale of one to 10 for sweetness. And what they do is they manufacture the cola, have them taste it, put it into storage um, at a high temperature to imitate the effect of four month storage at room temperature, and then they taste it again and compare those scores. So this is what's called a matched pairs experiment. And it's called a matched pairs experiment because we're measuring the same exact item again. This can of soda was tasted before storage, the same can of soda is tasted after storage. So it's not that we've manufactured one set and taste it along with a different set that had been stored. So when they do this measurement, they then subtract the um, before storage minus after storage to get the difference in sweetness. And what's a little bit confusing about this one is that a positive number actually results in a loss of sweetness. So um, you need to keep that in mind as you're interpreting the results here. So as we look at these 10 data values, we can see that most of them are positive. So it does appear that there was a general loss of sweetness, but they're, but they're not very large changes. And um, there were a couple of tasters that had negative scores representing a gain in sweetness. So the general question here is, are these data good enough evidence that the cola lost sweetness in storage? So what we're going to do is plot our distribution and then determine where you know, probability-wise, does the mean of this sample fall along the mean of the population and use that to determine whether or not the change was likely um, due to the particular sweetener or if it was just sort of a random act of chance. So whenever we're going to do something like that, the first thing we start doing is collecting our uh, descriptives. So uh, mu is something that we do not know. Um, then we are given our st standard deviation of our population, and that standard deviation was one. We know that we have 10 tasters. So our n is 10. We are given the sample mean, which uh, if we weren't given that, you could just calculate it yourself. And the sample mean in this case was 1.02. And then we don't have our standard deviation of our sample, but we could calculate that if we needed to. So we can calculate that by using the formula, the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. And we can do that. We'll have one divided by the square root of 10. And we calculate that comes out to be 
one six. So now what we're going to do is sort of cycle back here because what we're going to do is try to compare this new mean of our sample set here. We want to compare that with the mean of our population to see what kind of change happens. So while we don't know the mean of our population, what we're going to do is assume that um, we're going to, what we want to do is assume that there is no change. And if there is no change in sweetness, because the change in sweetness is something that um, is subtracted, then that means that our population mean is going to be zero, representing no change in sweetness. So now what we're going to do is we need to figure out where does this new value of 1.02 for the sample fall on, on the density distribution of this mean. So let's start by drawing our s curve. Okay, so here's our standard normal curve and here is our mean which is zero. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plot out our standard deviations, one, two, and three standard deviations away, just because we want to figure out where does our sample mean lie in relation to the population mean, this, this assumed mean of no change. So our standard deviation for our population is one. So the standard deviations are just going to be one, two, and three, and negative one, negative two, and negative three. And what we're going to do now is determine where does our population mean, our sample mean fall in this spectrum. Well our sample mean is 1.02. So 1.02 is going to be right here, very close to one. And I'm going to just switch that color because that's not a very good color to see. So we have our 1.02. and that falls right here, which is just a little bit more than one standard deviation away from the mean. So we want to figure out, is, is it un, is, what are the chances that this number here could have occurred by chance, or how likely it is that it could have happened within just our regular population? Well, we know within one standard deviation of the mean, 68% of all of our data is going to fall. And so this is just outside 68%, maybe 78%. So there's actually a chance, probably around 70%, that that data value would have occurred naturally to begin with, which means it's really not providing very good evidence to the fact that the loss of sweetness was due to the particular sweetener that we have. When it's very, very close like this, that means there's a pretty good chance it could have happened randomly anyway. If it had been really far out, then we would have seen that um, th there would have been a very small probability that that could have happened had it not been for the different sweeteners.